Welcome peoples to another wonderful video, this time entitled Conservation of Momentum. And we'll first start by deriving conservation of momentum. It basically starts with our math rep for impulse, which is F delta T equals MV final minus MV initial. Now when two objects come in contact with each other, we know that based on third law, the force of object A on object B is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction of the force of B on A. And it's true that the time that they are, are in contact with each other must be the same. So what that means is we could basically say that the force of A on B causes a change in momentum of B, and the negative force of B on A, which is the opposite of A on B, is equal to the change in momentum for object A. And you could see that on the right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply through by negative 1 on the equation on the right so that we have force of B on A is negative MAVA final my, uh, plus MAVA initial. So basically what we have here is two equations that are equal because we're saying that the forces are the same. So what we can do is set these two equations equal here. Now we got some negatives in this equation. We got finals and initials mixed on both sides. We're going to rearrange it so it looks pretty. And we are left with MAVA initial plus MBVB initial equals MAVA final plus MBVB final. All these variables aside, what it's saying is if you add up all the momentums in the beginning, that must equal the total of momentums in the end. This is called conservation of momentum. It is boxed so that you might put it on your card. Please understand that if you didn't quite follow that derivation, it's not the end of the world. If you have questions, please ask me about it. In the end, what's most important is that you can use the new math rep for conservation of momentum located on the bottom of the slide. So first thing we need to do before we start using it is to actually start discussing the different types of collisions when things come in contact with each other. The first is called perfectly inelastic. It's when two objects collide and remain stuck together, or they start stuck together as one and explode out in multiple objects. In this case, momentum is always conserved. Again, feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to write these definitions down. The next type of collision is inelastic. Now, this is where two objects collide and bounce off each other. However, they do not stay stuck together. And in this collision, momentum is conserved again. Finally, there's a collision called the elastic collision. This is where two objects bounce off each other. However, when they come in contact with each other, they don't deform. They don't, like, imagine a tennis ball in slow motion hitting a wall and deforming as it's in contact. This doesn't happen in an elastic collision. Therefore, there is no energy lost due to deformation. Here, momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. Now, I bring this collision up simply because it is a type of collision. However, it is not, and I repeat, not a type of collision that we will focus on when we do our problems. Now, in all these collisions, it's important to note that momentum is conserved. And please remember, that's because the force of one object on another is the same, and the time they're in contact is the same. Therefore, their changes in momentum must be the same. Therefore, momentum is conserved. So let's get started with a sample problem. Simple one, a 1,500 kilogram car traveling east has a perfectly inelastic collision with a 2,000 kilogram car traveling west. Watch out for words like east and west at uh, 8 meters per second. After the collision, they are traveling east at 2 meters per second. What is the initial velocity of the eastbound car? Again, I would strongly recommend drawing a picture of the initial conditions. We don't know the initial velocity of object A. I'm labeling the positive direction to remind me that since the other one is going west, it will have a negative velocity. After the collision, they, since it's a perfectly inelastic collision and they are stuck together, they are traveling east at 2 meters per second. So basically, we're going to write out the conservation of momentum math rep, as you can see here. We'll substitute in our values. 
You'll notice on the right hand side that I've simply added the masses together and treated them as one object. If they are stuck together, they automatically have the same final velocity. Here we solve for the final, uh, excuse me, the initial velocity of object A, and we get that it must have been moving at 15.33 meters per second. Pretty straightforward math, pretty straightforward to substitute into and to solve. We'll do another one. This time it'll be an elastic collision where they bounce off. Here you have a 100 kilogram bumper car traveling at 2 meters per second to the right. It has an elastic collision with a bumper car traveling 3 meters per second to the left. After the collision, the 100 kilogram bumper car is traveling left at 1 meters per second and the other bumper car is traveling right at 1.5 meters per second. What is the mass of the other bumper car? Again, please feel free to pause the video if you need to write this long problem down. Now, what we're going to do is start with a picture as always, labeling everything that's important, including the positive direction. That helps me remember that a car traveling left is going negatively. Afterwards, I've filled in whatever information I know. Here we start with conservation of momentum. I substitute in my values, and I have an unknown on both sides, but it is the same unknown variable. So combining like terms, we reduce it down to this, and then solving for the mass of the unknown bumper car, we get 66.67 kilograms for the mass of the unknown bumper car. Now, in summary, during any type of collision, momentum is conserved. It's a simple fact. There are three types of collisions, perfectly inelastic, inelastic, and elastic. And only during an elastic collision is Ke, excuse me, kinetic energy conserved since objects don't deform. Best example of this would be pretty close to a billiard ball or really atomic particles that don't compress. I would again suggest drawing a quick sketch of initial and final conditions and to avoid math errors label the positive direction since that is the most common um, math error made. Anytime a problem mentions the word collide or collision this means that you must do conservation of momentum. So this concludes our conservation of momentum video. Please feel free if you're inspired to attempt the next set of problems that are just conservation of momentum. Otherwise, we'll be working on them tomorrow in class.